Okay, good evening, everybody. I will call the meeting to order. Um, we have a couple of members missing tonight. So um, um, Brandon um, will be, you know, serving as a as a full voting member tonight for Henry. The model crown or scepter or something. <laughs> uh, two items on the agenda this evening. We have uh, Brett Roberts um, with regard to the uh, boat storage facility and a revised uh, use that he is proposing. And uh, secondly, we have the Roy's uh, here with us tonight to talk about their revised proposal for the shed that we've discussed at previous meetings. So um, uh, we have um, uh, Brett Roberts on Zoom, and um, I think um, um, Jack, and that's it, correct? So children. Yeah. OK. So um, Ship, I did um, notice that the the form that Brett Roberts submitted wasn't um, in the folder on the website with the rest of the material for the meeting. This. That, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, for planning board members, uh, what was submitted, there is information that was provided on the application form that's used for um, for building permits, basically. And I had talked with Chip and um, said that you know it's it's not um, it's not a building permit that we're talking about. It's a revision to a planning board approval that was issued. But the information here is um, I think is is sufficient for our purposes, and it's a, a relatively minor revision to the approval that we had issued previously. So, um, just to um, uh, for new members and to refresh everyone else's memory, we had approved a boat storage facility on Route Forty One uh, in town. And it was um, comprised of a new storage building, 60 by 80, I believe. And we had also approved some outdoor storage behind the building uh, for boats as well. Uh, there were a number of conditions on that approval. And at this point, um, uh, Mr. Roberts has come forward and would like to revise his approval to include the ability to uh, to rent, uh, I believe, canoes and kayaks, and because that is a uh, an extension of the use that we approved, uh, we need to consider that and um, make a decision on that on that request. Uh, before I get into the details of that, uh, uh, Brett, if you would like to just uh, summarize your proposal to us briefly and uh, fill in any gaps if I haven't included everything. Um, the only thing I, 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 you didn't really include is uh, I have I have kayaks and boat um, and um, canoes, but I also do uh, like I have some other boats, uh, ski boats and pon pontoons that I rent out. They're inside the building, but um, I, I do, other than that, it's you pretty much nailed it. <clears throat> I just uh, want to rent boats out of there uh, to uh, people. So um, and I want to be able to advertise out front on my, you know, front there. there. So. Other than that, um, most of the boats going to be uh, inside or out back or, or things like that. If there is a kayak and uh, canoe display out front that I keep them on just because it's easier instead of lugging them all around. But and, it, and it's nice for people to see them too. So other than that, it's a pretty simple deal. So so you're not proposing any additional storage area. Um, and, you know, besides what we had approved previously, what we're looking at is more the use, the rental of additional watercraft. Yeah, um, I, I would like to have to keep the canoe rack out front. There's a canoe, there's okay. a canoe and kayak rack out front that I keep canoes and kayaks on. I would like to have that, but other than that, yeah, I just. 
Um, any any questions before we get into a conversation about this? Any questions for Brad? I have a question. Jack? Um, on what you submitted, you said something about that the canoe rack would be, I said, it looks like behind the structure, but what you're saying is that the canoe it's not rack- behind the, It's not behind the structure. It's up front right there on the, on the lawn. Right, and so I, I'd like to keep it. And that's what I'd like to keep it. Yeah, right where it is, yeah. So it's different than what you wrote up here? Uh, I didn't, if I wrote it up wrong, I, I apologize. I, I didn't mean that. Uh, I, I meant it right where right where it is. Uh, right out the front, right to the, uh, if you look at the building, it's right to the left of the building, right by the, some trees there. So the, the rental boats and RV and rentals would be behind, would be in the structure or behind the structure, but the canoe and kayak stuff would be where the rack is now out front. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Unless I'm getting, you know, going in and out or something. But yeah, that that they're inside right now. They that's where they've been for weeks. So except when I pull them in and out or whatever to, to rent them. But right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So um, for planning board members, the ordinance provision that we're talking about is um, is a specific provision related to uh, the revisions to approved plans. And that is in um, article six, section three, which is site review um, H. And essentially, um, what what that provision discusses is when a request to revise an approval has to be treated as a new application um, or the opportunity for um, dealing with it in a in a single meeting and just uh, treating it as a revision rather than a, a new and separate application. So the pieces I think that are relevant here um, are, uh, H1F, first of all, and that states that a change of use, a change or expansion of a use um, must go through a new application process, except for a change of use that is substantially similar in nature to the approved use and that the planning board determines will not result in increased or additional adverse impacts. Um, and it goes on to say that if the planning board determines that that is the case and it's only a minor modification of the plan, that it can be dealt with um, at this meeting, essentially, and that we don't need to go back and require a new application and a new hearing and you know, the entire process. So I don't know if um, you have thoughts or comments or questions about that piece, if you'd like to discuss it, if you're in agreement or not, based on what you know about the application. That really is our first decision point if we're going to uh, deal with this as a as a minor change or not. Is there any disagreement that uh, when I looked at this, it appears to me to be you know a very similar use to what we approved. Um, it's a minor change. Um, in terms of the use, and I think the only, you know, the only physical manifestation of this revision would be the, the presence of the canoe rack, uh, canoe and kayak rack up front that Brett mentioned that he wants to maintain uh, as a form of advertisement. I would agree with that. I, I look at this as a minor revision. Yeah, I, I do too. I'm still confused by what rental of boat and RV rentals. 
votes to be stored in structure or behind structure. Is there a, so the only the only change would be the the canoe and kayak route rack out front. Right. But otherwise everything else would be kind of the way it is now. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's expanding the use expanding to this boat rental boat and kayak rental business and having the storage of the canoes and kayaks out front. Those are yes. the differences. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, I think the request principally, it, you know, it's around two things. Uh, the major one is that the use would be expanded to allow uh, rentals, which, you know, theoretically could result in some additional traffic and, uh, and so forth. And then secondly, um, um, maintaining the canoe and kayak rack in front of the building. Um, Mr. Roberts, I'm not sure this is my question is relevant, but I wasn't a member of the board when you, the board approved it, your earlier application. How how do you in terms of the placement of the rack? But how far will it be from the public right of the right of way? Oh, I don't know. Must be 30, 40 feet. It's there now. It's got to be 30, 40 feet from the road at least. Do you um do you intend to keep it in one location or do you expect you will want to no. move it around? It's a wooden you, structure. You have... No, I just wouldn't keep okay. it right on the lawn, right where it is. I there's no other really great place to keep it because it's on the side of the building and it's a, the bank goes up so it's sloped so that wouldn't be ideal and the behind the building is all driveway so that's really not ideal ideal so really the the only place i really would like to keep it is right right where it is okay. it's a lawn area lawn area right there i should have taken a picture but i i, did, I didn't think of it <clears throat> i don't know if everybody's seen it is what i'm getting at <clears throat> Maybe what you could do, uh, since you do intend to keep it in one location, um, mm -hmm. just so that's established in you know the the approval um, that we would issue, maybe you could just describe for us where it is, and we could include that. When you're um, when you're when you're standing in the road looking at my building, you know, so the road's behind you. If you right, there's a big uh, sixteen by six uh, fourteen high garage door it's right to the left of that um my building sits about 70 some odd feet maybe 80 feet off the road um and it's probably oh i don't know a little more than halfway back to the building on the left hand side right on the lawn area okay so to the to the left of the garage door and about halfway between the garage and the road is that right yes roughly yep okay. It, uh, yeah, it's probably a little closer to the building, but. <clears throat> Wait, any other questions, comments, concerns, board members? One, one last thing is um, Mr. Roberts mentioned the sign and the, the signs are the sort of purview of the code enforcement officer, but it seems like he should make sure that the signs he has two signs there. One is like a wooden sign and one is one of those flag signs or I don't know what you call them. But he should just check with the code enforcement officer to make sure that the signs are okay. Yeah, I think I checked with Chip when I put it up um, about distance it's off the road. I think they're, I think they're like 10 or 12 feet, the both of them, roughly. I could measure it, but I, I can't remember. But it's like, I'd say probably 10 feet off the edge of the road, off the edge of the pavement. Yeah, <clears throat> something, something like that. Does he under our ordinance? Do you get a? Do you get a? Some require a permit and some don't require a permit. I don't know which is which. I, I'm not up to date on that. Yeah, then, you want to yeah there's there's currently two signs there. One's a permanent sign which we applied for. The other one's a temporary sign which we allow when businesses first open. Um, the time's probably up on it, but we allow those when businesses first opened to grab attention. 
And that would be the cloth one. Uh, anything else? Any other questions or comments? And if not, I would take a motion. I move that we put in some minor revision and that we approve the application as amended. Is there a second? I'll second it. And we have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? So are we specifying what we're approving? We're approving the application for the boat rental business and the um, placement of a canoe and kayak rack out front. Is that what we're doing? So that's what I that's what I would like, yes. I don't know if you're talking to me or not. Uh yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> He agrees um, that it is those two things, Jack. Okay, thanks. And the notice of decision will reflect those two issues. So we have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Okay, for those in the room, all those in favor? Okay, the four, and Jack? Yes. Okay. All right, Brad, thank you very much. And you can check in with uh, Chip. There will be a written um, approval or written notice of decision that will come um, uh, not okay. immediate. Uh, he'll, he'll have it in the next week or so. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good All right. Have, have, have a good night. Thanks. Okay, uh, second agenda item tonight, uh, the Roy's are with us. And um, so a bit of history to refresh everyone's memory and for new members um, in particular that hadn't been part of all the conversations that we had previously. Um, the Roy's, um, 10 months ago, um, had originally uh, submitted an, an after-the-fact application for a replacement shed. Um, they had uh, moved ahead and replaced a shed that was very close to the water and almost on the property line. And uh, the shed had not received approval, which it, and approval was required because of its proximity to the lake. It's a, a non-conforming structure. And so we've been engaged in conversation. We held a hearing. Um, we extended the hearing a couple of times. And last winter determined that we really needed to look at the property as a board and do a site visit. Um, we did that in the spring, um, looked at the property, and what we determined um, ultimately was that the there appeared to be an alternative location to move the shed that was further from the lake and that the board had preliminarily uh, determined that it met the greatest practical extent criterion. Um, so the shed was required to be located um, meeting setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. We had a lot of conversation um, you know, between the board and the Roy's about what that meant in this particular uh, situation. And um, the Roy's hired a consultant um, to look at possible locations for the shed and uh, to present information to the planning board. So the planning board um, has not actually made a decision on this application yet. And, and the reason being that there were a couple of different ways that the Roy's could go. 
Um, the proposal that they made, although the location of the shed that they were they were looking to relocate um, appeared to be, uh, again, preliminarily uh, acceptable, the height of the shed was not acceptable because the ordinance specifically uh, limits accessory structure height to eight feet. And this particular shed um, was 10 feet. And I think given the topography, it was a bit taller than 10 feet. And so uh, the boys elected uh, to submit an application to the Board of Appeals requesting a variance to the height restriction. Uh, the Board of Appeals denied that variance request. And so the Roy's are back here uh, with the planning board so that we can come to some decision about the application for the shed that we had tabled um, in order to allow the Roy's time to go to the appeals board and to examine their options. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, um, at a previous meeting, uh, the planning board, in the discussion about whether or not the shed had been located to meet setback requirements to the greatest practical extent, um, we had looked at a number of different options that had been put forward and made this preliminary um, decision, um, which is reflected in the minutes, that um, the, the actual location of this new shed um, met the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. However, we were not able to approve it because the height exceeded the height limitation, um, that limitation being eight feet. So the Roy's um, have uh, engaged with a consultant again, and the result um, is the material in the revision request that was in your in your packet. And um, I have a number of thoughts um, about the the proposal that's in front of us, but I do want to hear from the Roy's first. Um, I would say uh, at the outset that um, the proposal that's being made. Um, the revision to the application they have in front of us uh, is for a couple of different things at this point. It's not limited to the shed. Um, they have extended that and have decided that if they're going to be uh, doing construction work that they also want to rebuild the deck and they are, um, uh, there is um, there are a couple of different proposals for relocating the access point to the home. And, and so forth. And so we'll need to talk about all of that, but first, um, if um, uh, Dan and or Connie, if you could uh, summarize for us and kind of uh, give us the highlights of the proposal that you're, that you're making. So after uh, consulting with an excavation company local locally, it was addressed that moving the shed to the preliminarily approved greatest possible extent location would destabilize access to the, our access path to our house. So, uh, in which was a concern of mine due to the corner of the corner of the shed and its close proximity to the path. So in order to maintain our access, um, it was suggested that we come up with an alternative access point uh, that would, I suppose, sort of be suspended across um, any uh, erosion point that would prevent us from accessing the house. And that is because we have to level off a spot for the location of the shed, which will dig into the slope of the property, making that a little bit more, more 
dangerous and potentially cause more erosion. So one consider one thought was to create sort of a or replace the the walkway with sort of a, a bridge of sorts that would span um, over the excavated area and meet the, our access path further up the hill, avoiding the slope that would be created for the shed. That would that was concept A. Um, Concept B was to create a sort of a walkway landing um, that would extend behind our house, um, adjacent to our house, um, replacing the walkway entirely and building a set of stairs to access our parking area up above the, the hill, closer to the road. And I think just to add to that, that what was pointed out is because the shed was built in the 90s uh, and we, or not the shed, the deck was built in the 90s. Um, and there are, we know there are structural problems with it already. We know there's, there's rod, there's, you know, lifting and whatnot, that if you're adding a new structure to that shed, or to the deck, sorry, that that deck would probably have to be replaced as well because it may not be able to join with all of that. It won't be long before the deck is not safe um, to, to use as primary access. So this would be a good opportunity for us to tackle um, that part of the project um, while we are modifying our access. <clears throat> what, one question I had. Um, is is about um, I couldn't really tell the elevation of these these you know, the proposed landings and and so forth. Or, um, well, starting with concept A, is that um, is that landing flush with the deck? Yes, it's flush with the deck. Yes, so it it, it would be part of the deck. Yes. And is that true of concept B? Yes. Um, I would uh, mention um, you know, specifically for, for planning board members, when you're thinking about this, one of the things that's important to keep in mind is that the um this this structure, this um, you know, the house which includes the deck uh, as a as an element of the structure is non-conforming um because uh, in part it is located less than a hundred feet from the lake. And so, you know, the replacement um, of the deck is, is one matter. Um, expansion of the deck is, is, is something, uh, something a bit different. And <clears throat> so I, you know, as I looked at this plan, I was having some difficulty understanding you know, what the elevations were and so forth, and whether or not this landing uh, would be considered part of the deck or if it's something different. And uh, um, so I think we, you know, we have the answer to that, that question. Uh, the other thing that I would raise uh, as a point of discussion for planning board members is that um, it's clear that the shed is the, the piece of this, this project that we've been looking at for a number of months now. And it's clear that the planning board has to take some action on the pending application. 
the replacement of an existing, uh, a portion of an existing structure, uh, which the deck represents, um, is something that falls within the purview of the code enforcement officer um, under, under normal circumstances. And um, uh, Jack and I had some conversation about this and it appeared to us that that portion of the work, although, you know, understanding in practical terms, you know, the Roy's need to, to look at this um, as, a, as a package, um, if you're going to have a contractor come and do the work, thinking about the jurisdiction of the planning board and the code enforcement officer, uh, the deck replacement really is something quite different than the location of the shed that we've been discussing. Um, so I would just put that out there for your consideration. Uh, Jack, did you want to add anything to that? Well, the, the, the walkway down to the house and the landing, I think are all beyond 100 feet from the normal high watermark. So we wouldn't be concerned about that either. Right. Um, what I was thinking about, Jack, was the provision in the non-conforming structure piece that talks about expansion of a structure, any portion of which is less than 100 feet from the lake. But are they expanding? Well, that it, that you know, that's that's one of the things I'm 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 puzzling about a little bit, um, and why I asked the questions about the landing, and whether that would be whether that's part of the deck or not. Um, you know, there is a, there is a provision in the ordinance that allows for um, stairs and um, access points. Uh, but in looking at the plan, it just wasn't clear to me if, you know, if that was stairs and strictly a point of access or if it was an enlargement of the deck. Well, there's an existing landing now, right? And this is changing landing. No, there isn't, Jim. Yeah. Um, so let's see, if you look at the, the definition of structure on um, excludes, um, sidewalks, steps, or stairways of no more than four feet in width, and then a whole host of other things. Um, um, embankment retaining walls, um, that, that sort of thing. So if we were talking about um, steps or stairs, um, something of that sort. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the, um, I wouldn't have the concern. Um, is the landing that's being proposed, um, there are steps or is it, I guess it's concept A I'm looking at. Um, the it's current, not step, the it's a steps, walkway. The current steps essentially would be replaced by a landing um, to accept um, a set of stairs that goes down to um, the lower or the finished rate of the lower level, as well as access the current walkway away from the excavated area that needs to be created for the shed in its alternate location. So in that area that's marked landing currently, what what is there right now? Nothing. Nothing. So it's 
uh, grass? Um, it, there's sloping hill and grass. Yeah, okay. So from the landing, you go downstairs to the center facing the, the lake, right? and then that takes a 90 degree turn and goes down. Right, so we would be sort of decrease it. Those stairs would go, uh, would be within the envelope of the existing deck. Mm -hmm. So we would be cutting out a piece of that or that corner of the deck and essentially replacing it with the landing. With, with the stairs? The corner of the deck that when you come upstairs, yeah. the, the corner of the deck would need to be removed to accommodate a set of stairs going to the lower level. Yeah. And that happens to be the same square footage that the landing would take up. Okay, so that, that landing is, is part of your stairway if it, it's to it, access the stairs yes access the stairs as well as the alternate uh walkway to our current access path if we're looking at concept a so that got an a and a b um you have not determined which of those you're interested in. We've talked around both with um, the excavator to see, um, not knowing what what the excavation is really going to do our our hill and the slope. We there was these both were um, viable options for us depending on what the final grade looks like when he's done. <clears throat> Other questions by the board members? Thoughts? So if we just deal with the shed, then I mean why do we need to deal with where the where the landing is or the stairs? I mean, that may or may not be subject to the code enforcement officer. Yeah, and the, I mean the reason the reason I asked some of the questions I did is in part to, you know, to figure out if this is appropriately within the jurisdiction of the code enforcement officer versus the planning board. And it, it, it sounds to me like it is, um, but I wanted to make sure that we were clear on that piece, um, you know, before we just moved to deal with the shed. Once, John, you once the excavation, if I could inter interject, once the excavation, um, starts and is completed for the new location of the shed, it will essentially deem our access um, unstable and un unstable for use. So an alternate location will have to be coordinated. An alternate attempt will have to be coordinated with the excavation company in order for us to maintain all right. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Okay. You know, if you moved ahead with a project, you'd want to do right. it all at once. Yeah. So, Paul, what I'm hearing, <clears throat> if we deem that that the changes to the deck to accommodate the, the change in the location of the shed, if, if that's all to be handled by the code enforcement officer, then that we're not being asked to choose between A or B or B. Right, we're right. We're not saying anything about it. Right. Time. We're right. just looking at the set of yeah. And, uh, you know, it, uh, again, it seemed to me that, that 
you know, we needed to understand it well enough to determine whether that was the appropriate way to go and you know, a piece of it would be approved by the CEO versus the planning board. Um, I didn't want to just move ahead with the shed if there were lingering questions about jurisdiction on the rest of the project. Well, hey man. Yes, sir. Understand that you're uh, approving this shed as an after the fact, or even if you were just approving this shed. Once you approve the shed, the applicant still has to come for a building permit. And in that building permit, he's going to have to figure out a way to stabilize certain areas that might be affected by this. So your approval here for the project is not the end game. There has to be a building permit and that has to fit all the code. The second part, the deck and the stairs and landings and everything would be judged in a different building permit to see if it fits, it doesn't make it more not conforming. And if it fits, then there'll be a permit issued for that separately. If it's shown to be more not conforming or if there's a problem with it, then it would come back to you all again. Well, I think in part, that's why we're talking about it now. Exactly. To, you know, to make sure that that's not the case. Um, and, you know, understanding that there would not be a formal decision made about it, but I think it's important to understand it well enough so that, you know, we can say that's not likely going to be the case. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, also understanding the Roy's need, you know, if they're going to move ahead with the project, they will want to, you know, to do it all at once rather than in in a couple of different pieces, you know, particularly to address the, the issue that you just raised about um, erosion control and stabilization. If cutting away the slope to accommodate the shed is going to cause that. Again, we'll need things like an erosion control plan for construction. We'll yeah. need a, yeah. a flood water plan for after it. And in terms of your comment, we'd like to get it all done once. I agree, that's ideal. It would depend upon how it's applied for and what it entails. So there, there is no promises in that. Chip, do you have questions about the debt proposal and the, the stairs, the, the, the access? I think there's a lot of questions there. This is a preliminary proposal that needs a site okay. visit for me. It needs to be probably a, a discussion with whoever the contractor is as to what's going on, uh, how much uh, material is going to be moved. There's a limit on the amount of you know, material mm -hmm. to be moved in shoreland. Material, you mean dirt, rocks. Um, I mean, all that has to be judged. Um, I don't believe you've spoken yet about the height of the shed, so I think that should be addressed also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, other comments, questions, thoughts about, you know, the project overall, and Chip's right, we haven't talked about the height issue yet, and we'll, we'll get to that, but are there any other thoughts about the, the deck and the access proposal before we move on to that? Okay. Um, so um, for the Roy's, as I understand it, um, you are doing two things to address the height of the shed. One is to level the ground by cutting into the slope uh, to, to make the ground level so that you know, it doesn't raise the height of the shed. And you're also um, altering the, uh, the shape of the roof, the roof line. And those two things together, um, if I understand this correctly, will bring the shed height down to the eight feet that's required by the ordinance. That's right. 
and I had a question. The the shed will be, as I understand it, eight feet from the sideline and no closer to the water than the principal structure. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Okay. There should be a couple of other papers that we submitted that. Yeah, there is a there is a sketch plan that indicates that the front of the shed um, is lodged with the front of the structure, and that, as I recall, is eighty seven feet from normal high water, and then the shed is eight feet uh, from the side line, the side setback, the property boundary. And there was a sketch, um, that one? No, that's an old one. Um, Chip, you had sent both of those sketches out, as I recall. Uh, there was an old one that we had worked from initially, and then there was a modified um, sketch that indicated the 87 feet and the 8 feet from the sideline. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, and what it doesn't show, this to the right is the 8 feet. Yeah. That's on that sketch there. This one? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it does. Yeah, what it doesn't show is the 87. Shows 8 feet. I think the cross section I'm seeing is on the left hand of your binder there. I'm looking at it upside down. Okay. That one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that, that shows the green. Yeah. Um, the eight feet feet. Except that it was moved. This it says number mm -hmm. one. That's not seventy nine. That's eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven. But the eighty is right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as I mentioned before, we had talked a lot about different possible locations for the shed and what we ultimately um, settled on and agreed was probably uh, representative of the greatest practical extent um, was this 87 feet from normal high water and eight feet from the sideline. Um, <clears throat> so other questions or comments, thoughts about the shed location and the shed height? Um, it appears that the modifications that are being proposed would bring the shed height uh, down to the gate feet that's required. And the other question around that is, you know, the setbacks to the greatest practical extent. So um, I have I have two questions for planning board members. Um, one, um, it you know it appears to me, um, as I mentioned earlier, that the deck and the access proposal um, really is within the purview of the code enforcement officer. Um, a Code enforcement officer approval would be would be required for it, and it really is not uh, within the planning board's purview, given the you know the nature of the changes that are being proposed. 
So I would ask first if there are any additional thoughts about that, um, uh, if everyone is comfortable with that approach, um, if you have any questions about it, objections, uh, now's the time. I think it gives the Roy's the most flexibility to work with the contractor and the code enforcement officer to figure out what works best there. Because I don't think we're in a position to determine that tonight. And it is the CEO's purview. Uh, you know, I, I, I would be concerned about the planning board moving ahead to pass judgment on something that really does not seem to be within our jurisdiction. Um, it, it, um, it does appear to be a, a CEO for me issue. Um, and the way I get there in my mind is that in the non-conforming structure chapter, um, there is a piece that says if you remove um, and want to replace a portion of a non-conforming structure um, and you've removed less than 50% of it, um, that it can be reconstructed in place with a permit from the code enforcement officer. So that's the specific piece that, that you know, I've, I've gone back to a couple of times and that's in article three, section four, D two. Um, there are lots of other situations under which the, uh, the planning board would be issuing the decision, but um, again, I don't think this is one of those. Anything else, anybody on that before we move on? Okay, I will take that as agreement. Um, so the shed, um, we do have a pending application for the shed. Um, the Roy's have proposed to modify it um, by cutting into the slope and by modifying the roof line. And if there are no additional questions about the proposal, um, I would take a motion. I have a I have a question. Um, is there a date by which the shed will be moved from its current location to its new location? I'm asking the boys. Yeah. The the answer is no. Um, our time frame due to the accessibility of the location is either before snow or after mud. Um, and so if we have if we have to coordinate reconstruction of our primary access with the excavation of the shed, um, there's lots of variation variables that come into play with that. So, um, that would mean if we if we got a permit to rebuild our deck, we could move forward with the movement of the shed in the proposed location. Because they would need to be coordinated together. The reason being that <clears throat> As I understand it, your point is that the uh, excavation that you would need to do to relocate the shed is going to interfere with your existing access to the house. That's right. And that's part of your rebuild. <clears throat> that's right. Proposed. So would it be fair to say that everything will be done by June 1st? I, I would love to say that um, if we have a June like we had this year, um, there will, the mud season will be extended. Mm 
the adjustment of the height on the shed could be accomplished in a maybe a timely manner. And with the other part, as you said, you know, we could figure that out depending upon the season all. But the adjusting the height of the shed could happen at any time without much disruption. Um, I guess what I'm hearing is that part of the height adjustment involves excavation into the slope. I mean, that's shed. what the proposal well, is. The shed is the shed. I mean, the slope is the slope. The shed has to be eight feet from ground to the top. It has nothing okay. really to do with the slope. Well, it, the proposal has two elements to it. One is to, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but it, it appears that to bring the height down, they're creating a level spot by cutting into the slope to place the shed on a level spot spot instead of the slope and then they're adjusting the roof line on the shed as well again you go slowly whether it goes there in the new position or the old position it still has to be reduced that amount it's going to be the same the, the, the height is based on the shed not on the ground it's, it, no, it, it's based on the ground too it is based on the ground as well because under our definition of height of the structure, if it's on a slope, you measure from the downside to the top. So we don't right. know when they start actually doing this work. It may be that it, it may be that it's on level ground, but it may be that it's on a slope. So they won't be able to know that until they do the work. I would think. Okay. And you know, if the if the slope is excavated and soil is moved, I mean, under any scenario, that would have to be stabilized in some way. But Jack, were you thinking that some sort of a time frame attached to an approval? Is that where you're headed? Right, because it's a unapproved shed yeah yeah, yeah. So um, be... so conceivably we could say something like um you know as soon as possible but no later than you know, June 1, unless otherwise agree. Um, um, again, just for purposes of discussion, given the weird climates we've had, I think mean, June 30th or July 1 would be create less of the problem down the road. We have a lot of wet maze. Do you want me to make a motion and we can discuss it? Okay, go ahead. I think we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application as amended subject to the following conditions. Um, the structure has to meet the requirements in Article 3, Section 4H regarding accessory structures. And that in measuring the height of the structure that the definition in, of height of the structure in Article 11 has to be used to deal with the height of this structure. That the structure um, can be no closer to the normal high water mark than the current principal structure. That the structure can be no closer to the sideline than eight feet on the side where you're Proposing to put it, I don't know which direction that is. That the standard conditions of approval apply, and that before the structure can be used, it has to obtain a certificate of use, and only after an on site inspection to ensure that the structure meets the requirements of this decision and the LUO, and that the current unapproved structure be removed or moved by July 1st. 
That sideline is to the west, Jack. Okay. Eight feet from the western, a minimum of eight feet from the western sideline. Angelica, did you get that? Um, just the first part was a little bit hard to hear, but I think I got the rest of it. Okay, so they have to meet the requirements of Article 3, Section 4H. Okay. Regarding capacity structures, which... Yeah, got it. Okay. And Thank you. He also referenced the definition of height of a structure. Okay. Which is one part of that part that it can't be used till it has a CO. It's already being used unless you're asking the applicant to empty it, leave it empty. It's in use and will be in use. So that last part doesn't hold the water. What last part? That structure not be used until a certificate of occupancy is Jack, how did you do I, that? I didn't hear you say that, Jack. Yeah, I, I said something that it has to obtain before they can obtain a certificate of use. So that before they can obtain a certificate of use, there has to be an on site inspection. So I mean, you, it wasn't they, talking about they are using. using it wasn't talking about their use of the shed. It was talking about a certificate of use. Um, and that being a necessary, I mean, and it is a necessary requirement anyway, regardless of whether they put it in the permit. So I, I assume that's understood um, by, by the Roy's that before any of the work, you know, before before the shed, um, before anything else that may be approved, that uh, a you know a certificate of use and occupancy has to be issued by the CEO. Well, no, you have to get a building permit before they can construct. They get a certificate of use when it's finished. I just wanted to make sure okay. that there was an inspection to make sure that it meets the setbacks. And the, and the other requirements of accessory structures. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Um, do you have enough of that down, Angelica, that you could repeat it? Okay, so the motion is that the structure needs to apply to Article 3, Section 4H, um, also referring to the definition of the height of a structure, um, that the height is no more than eight feet, no closer to the high water line than the principal structure, which is 87 feet, no closer to the sideline than eight feet west, um, and the standard conditions of approval are applied, and it needs a certificate of use after an on-site inspection by the CEO, and it needs to be moved by July 1st of 2024. Good. Is that Jack? Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, is there a second? Second. John seconds. Any further discussion? Okay, um, all those in favor uh, in the room? First, all of us and Jack. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so thank you very much to Royce um, for explaining that and answering our questions. That was helpful. Um, so I would um, encourage you to submit. Um, to chip for the the deck and the access point, um, looking for a CEO permit for that for that work, and um, and for the structure itself. Can we design that one? The application I'm talking about is for the rest of the project, right. the deck and the access. We still have to put in a building permit. Yes, that. but that's different than this application for the deck and the access point. 
Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, again, thanks very much. Uh, that was that was helpful. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thank you. So the only remaining item on the agenda for us is the approval of minutes on August 22nd. And I had sent today some suggested edits. Good night. I don't know if you had a chance to look at those. We can take a couple of minutes if you want to run through them before we take the I, I did look at them um, on my screen. I, I did not print them out, but I didn't see anything that was uh, created a substantive difference, but did you intend one, uh, Paula? In any of those changes from the from the draft that was previously presented. Okay. Uh, factual difference is uh, that yeah. Yeah. Um I I don't I don't think that there was any question about um uh, about factual issues. Um my purpose in, in making the edits that I did was that most of the discussion was around Sincarpa, which is a pretty major project that's caused some a lot of discussion and controversy. And um, I had more of an eye toward um, clarity and specificity. Um, and that really was the uh, the reason for the edits that I put forward. Any other um, comments on on the minutes? Um, any additions? Um, any uh, any proposed edits of mine that you're not you're not comfortable with or in disagreement with? And if not, I would take a motion on the minutes of August 22nd. We approve the minutes as amended. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Peter seconds. Uh, further discussion? Not all those in favor in the room? And Jack? Yep. yep. All right. Um, that is twenty second. What's that? The twenty second. The twenty sixth. Next meeting. I yeah. We have two applications. One is the new solar project over by Carly Pond, and the other one is a possible uh, commercial overlay district. Application. How many do you want on next week? Next oh, meeting. Oh, how many do you got? Two. Oh, okay. They're both. They're okay. both going to be in conversation. Well, um, the the uh, the CID zone. Um, I've got to spend some time with that because my thought is that he may need to provide some additional information because you know I, I talked to you about the fact that it's a two-step thing it's a rezoning and then a specific approval of a use on top of that new zone and um so i want to spend a little more time with it to figure out if there's anything more that needs to be presented as part of the application um so I'm not certain about two weeks from now. Okay. 
um, you know, we can we can try for it. But I think you know, you and I should have that conversation at least. Um, and what what Chip is talking about there is, um, there is a provision in the in the ordinance for the establishment of what's called a commercial industrial district. Um, it's pages aren't right, so I'm going to dig for it. It's Article Nine which is on my page 115. And it's a, a provision that was included in the ordinance um, quite a number of years ago, but it's never been used. So this will be the first, the maiden voyage of this commercial industrial district ship. And it's, it's different because it establishes a new district. So an applicant would come forward and propose to rezone um, some parcel or parcels to commercial industrial. And what that would allow someone to do would be to build a structure in excess of 5,000 square feet because the ordinance currently limits um, up to 5,000 unless you're in the special zone. So uh, the one that is is kind of on the on the sidelines pending is um, is John Cushing, um, who wants to build a, a larger storage um, facility that would exceed five thousand square feet. So um, I want to make sure that the pieces fit together well uh, because it does involve a rezoning and then a specific site approval for the use that he's proposing. And um, the other provision that's different about this is that it has to go to town meeting for approval ultimately. So the planning board acts on it, but then it um, it goes to town meeting. You know, to the to the select board first, obviously, and then to town meeting. So um, it's a different kind of process. Is there a special town meeting that's coming up, or is the next one not until next May or June? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't heard that there was any move afoot for a special town meeting, Jack, and you haven't heard no. no. So, and, okay. And in terms of Norwich, the solar project, has Chip notified them that the application is complete? They did, and notified them that it was likely that they'd be meeting with us on the 26th. Okay, well, let's definitely plan on that one and um, then we can talk about the CID zone. Okay, um, oh, the only other thing I wanted to mention, um, well, actually, it's probably no one who really cares at this meeting. <laughs> we all care. Um, uh, Peter, you, you're doing the MMA training thing, right? You've talked to Eric about that. Well, I have. I, I was told, I thought, first I was told, well, there's a live session in October or an online one in December. I said, I'll choose the online one. Yeah. But then the last nice email I received from Eric was that it wasn't possible to access it from my home. I would have to come to the town office okay. and sit here for three let, hours. Let, let me clarify. <laughs> Maybe you do care yeah. about this. Um, uh, Brandon's already done it. Um, he he did the uh, he did the training and John Mitchell did it and um, it's um, you know it's required for new members um, it's you know it's a great thing for um, members who have been around a while and you know I'm I'm actually interested in in doing it again at some point just to refresh refresh my memory on certain things but so the options that are available uh, Brandon you did the the 
uh, the Zoom version, yeah. right? And so there is an October, I forget which is which, but there is um, there's a remote version and an in-person version uh, that MMA is doing in October and then in December. But the other option is the one that I, I think that Eric was describing to you that was a little confusing. And he has um, acquired through MMA the training program. It's on his laptop. He can't send it to us. Um, but the training program is there and it doesn't rely on MMA. It's a you know previously recorded thing. And so that's the third option. So either there's the, the Zoom version with MMA, the, on, uh, the in-person version with MMA, which includes dinner, um, and, <laughs> and the, um, um, the recorded version that is on Eric's laptop. That's the one I think he, he told you was a possibility. Well, I prefer to do the Zoom version. Yeah. That wasn't presented uh, as an option though the last time, so I am confused. So. When will we, who should I talk to about and sign up for the Zoom version? Um, Teresa's doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I I don't have the dates here. Um, I'm thinking that the October one might be the live one. It is. The because I keep getting emails unrelated to this board and from the day telling me to okay. show up on October 12th if I want to do the live one. Okay. So the Zoom version, the next Zoom version is in December. And the dates are on the MMA website. But I just don't remember what it is. So, and then, you know, for anyone else who might be interested, there's also this third option of either sitting and sitting in the town office for three hours with Eric's laptop, or um, he said that, um, you know, people could take his laptop on if you wanted to do it that way. So those are the, the three options. So I have to speak to uh, Teresa, who do I speak to about the Zoom version? Yeah, I think it would be Teresa. Or yeah, uh, uh, Teresa handled, uh, you know, the payment and so really forth for the other yeah, ones. Kristen, Teresa, or I can help them get that okay. schedule. Okay. But Teresa ultimately is the one that's going to pay it payment-wise and everything. Mm -hmm. so. So, so maybe you could connect with Teresa yeah, and I will yeah. facilitate that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else, anybody? Okay. Thank you all. We are adjourned.